Hey guys, I'm Dr. Tashan Kasid again here with my new video on the topic that is homeostasis. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis is actually the maintenance of the constant internal environment of the body despite changes in the external environment. So, what are the components involved in the homeostasis? What are the different mechanisms involved in the homeostasis? Here, our body has cells, different cells, and these cells have ECF medium. So, if this ECF medium has pH, constant pH of 7.4, which is normal to the cell, but whenever it is rising or falling down, there will be the alkalosis or acidosis. But this is maintained through the blood system and kidney systems. Likewise, there is a rise in the temperature or a fall in the temperature of our body. So, this temperature of 37 should be maintained and the mechanisms which are maintaining this is skin through the uh, evaporation uh, through the skin and there are the systems that is the hypothalamus which is controlling the pyrexia or increase or decrease in our temperature. So what are the different components which are involved in the maintaining homeostasis? That is the deviation, when there will be the deviation, there are the sensors which are sensing those deviations and there will be the control center which will forward the messages to the effector and effector will then correct the deviations and the system will come to the normal point. So this maintenance is achieved by the feedback signals. What are the two basic signals which are involved? That is negative feedback signals and the positive feedback signals. Here we now discuss the negative feedback signals or the negative feedback mechanism. So this mechanism of negative feedback is very common and it is occurring in many, many mechanisms and many processes in our body. So this negative feedback mechanism is the one to which the system reacts in such a way to arrest the change or reverse the direction of a change. So when there is a rise or a uh, or fall. When there is a rise in any condition or there is a change or iteration, this negative feedback will bring this to the negative and this is in opposite direction. So here we are dealing with the example of uh, maintenance of the normal uh, water content in our body and the TSH secretion. TSH is the thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone is released from the pituitary gland and this gland then uh, acts on the thyroid glands and the thyroxine is released. When there is the increased secretion of thyroxine or uh, there is the increased level of thyroxine in the blood, the signal with negative signal will go to the pituitary gland and the TSH secretion will be inhibited and there is the decrease secretion of thyroxine from the thyroid glands and this will lead the level of the thyroxine to the normal. Likewise, when there is a decrease in the secretion of thyroxine, there will be the stimulation of TSH secretion and this TSH secretion will increase the secretion of thyroxine from the thyroid glands and this will bring to the normal. This is how decrease and increase in the thyroxine level in the, in the blood will be in the homeostasis like uh, through this uh, negative feedback mechanism. Uh, we will take here another example of the negative homeostasis or negative feedback mechanism which is uh, ADH system maintaining the water content level in our, in our body. Uh, we will discuss here, uh, this is all about the negative feedback. Now here we will take the example of the ADH. So, we were discussing the negative feedback mechanism in which we have done the TSH system and now here we are dealing with another example that is ADH mechanism involved in the maintenance of the water balance in our body. So normally the input and output is equal that is 2300 ml per day equals to 2300 ml per day when there is no deviation in the water level. So when there is a shortage or a fall in the water level, then there will be the increased thirst, we will feel thirsty and there will be the stimulation of thirst center that will lead 
increase amount of intake of the water which will lead the decrease or shortage of water to the normal level likewise there will be the stimulation of the osmo receptors present in the hypothalamus so these receptors when stimulated they will increase the adh secretion from the posterior pituitary adh is the anti diuretic hormone so when this hormone is stimulated there will be the increased water reabsorption from the kidneys so there will be the more water reabsorbed and the shortage of water is maintained to the normal likewise when there is a increased amount of water in the body or a water content in the body there will be no stimulation required and no stimulation of osmo receptors occurs and this will lead decrease adh secretion decrease adh secretion will lead the decrease reabsorption from the kidney and this will lead it to the normal so there will be the no thrust center involved like uh, it, as it is increased water content no thrust center will be stimulated there will be no feeling of thirst and decrease intake of the water will lead the increase amount of water to the normal level so this is all about the adh mechanism involved in the maintenance of the water content in our body so this is uh, also controlled through, through this negative feedback mechanism so we are done with the tsh uh, mechanism and adh mechanism involved in the homeostasis uh, through the negative feedback mechanism so we are done with the negative feedback now we will uh, we will do the positive feedback